you probably have had gallbladder surgery, but I don't know anything about it. But uh, they think that what is my problem, among other things. But uh, the night that we were up at Henrietta, and I thought I heard, of course, you know how I hear, not well at all. And Janie says it's selective hearing. What I want to hear, I hear, and what I don't, I don't. But uh, I thought I heard him say his blood was almost sepsis. And I know what that means. Uh, Jamie Bowles' blood went sepsis. And I could have very easily joined him. And so they started pumping uh, antibiotics and things. And I, <laughs> I was visiting with my wife today about, uh, I don't know if any of y'all ever think about it, but have you ever thought about uh, things you did as teenagers? And you think, how did I survive that? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm up to number five now. <laughs> five things I should have been dead. I mean, really, I'm, I'm serious. So I told Janie, I said, I guess God's got something else for me to do. Amen. Because <laughs> and those, those five things I may or may not share with you sometimes. <laughs> but... A couple of them might be a little bit illegal. <laughs> I'm not going to share anything else, but uh, I wrote down five things that I could have been dead, you know, but God protected me and saved me. And uh, as I said, I may or may not share that because. I'll wait until Jeff Lyde's not here to share. But uh, has anybody else had experiences that were near death? God's got a reason. God's got a reason. So uh, whatever he wants me to do, I will do. And then you throw in uh, a stroke, a few other little things, you know, and you think, dear Lord, when is this all going to end? And I want to go, time out. Time out, Lord. I'm, I'm ready to coast, coast along for a while. Uh, but he hadn't given me that coast, that coast approval yet. Uh, he's got stuff, something for all of us to do. And you may say, oh, not me. Oh, yes, you. Especially you. Especially. He's looking for a willing vessel. And don't turn him down. The scripture I found uh, for tonight was Psalms 34, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. We go through a lot of trials, and like I said, a lot of things that should have happened or could have happened didn't happen. So... Don't ever give up on God because he's not going to give up on you. With uh, all of the, if you watch the news, you'll be sick, I promise you. If you watch the news, the negative, <clears throat> excuse me, the negative news, uh, it's pitiful. And this guy that was killed is George Floyd. I agree. It should not have happened. I agree with that. But I don't want to go, go, go burn down Nocona 
because that happened. And uh, I want to talk about the love of God tonight. My first thought was to gripe and complain. And, I, and we all do that. Gripe and complain about what's going on in our world and none of us is going to change it. But, you know, you can get mad about the rights, about the things going on in our world. It's not going to do a bit of good. Not a bit. You can gripe all you want to. So I decided tonight to talk about the love of God. That's what we need now more than anything, ever. Matthew 19, verse 13 and 14 says, Then the little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and to pray for them. But the disciples rebuked those that brought them. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. I remember that when I was a young Christian, and yes, I can remember back that far, how can I be good enough for God? That just seemed impossible. I was a teenager, and I thought, God is up in heaven, and he's waiting with his zap it stick to zap me because, you know, I may not have been doing everything that I should have been doing, or I was doing some things I shouldn't have been doing. Uh, but as I grew older, uh, in my relationship with God, I realized how much God loved me just because I'm me. And he loves you the same just because you're you, a child of his. We're all still a work in progress. progress. Uh, what was that little song? God's still working on me. Y'all remember that? He's working on all of us. None of us have arrived, as the young people would say. We haven't arrived. But it's knowing the love of God that causes us to want to do more for him. We want to live our lives to please him. We're to become as little children when it comes to our faith. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, the word says, Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. For me, when I was younger, I really didn't understand God's love. Now, I went to church, and I knew John 3, 16. Uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Are you a whosoever? Whosoever believes in him shall have eternal life. For God so loved the world. Put your name in there. For God so loved Janie. For God so loved Terry. For God so loved Freddie. For God so loved you. But can you imagine giving one of your children for me? And if you have no children, imagine sacrificing one of your parents for someone. We cannot even begin to imagine God's love for us and the sacrifice Jesus made for us out of love. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5 and 7, 5 through 7, Moses told the children of Israel, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commands I give you today to be put upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk to them when you sit at home, when you walk down the road, and when you lie down at night, and when you get up. And I wrote out beside this, do we? Do we? Do we impress on our children what we want them to know? Maybe, maybe not. We should. Moses covered it pretty well, don't you think? Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. 
Moses was a man that talked with God. He knew what God wanted us to do. Moses was saying, talk to your kids. Tell them about his love. They need to know that God loves them. They need to know that from a very early age. These commands I give you and impress them on your children. Personally, I think that's where we're missing the boat. A lot of kids, young people, they aren't getting taught at home. You can send them to Sunday school for one hour a day, or you can teach them at home for several hours a week. But don't expect the Sunday school teachers to make great Christians out of your children. That's your job. Uh, Proverbs 22, verse 6 says, Train a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not turn from it. How do we train them? There are two ways, and there's only two ways that we train them. We train them by what we do or what we don't do. Either way, you're training them. If you don't do something, you're training them. If you do teach them the right way, then you're doing something. But you either train them by doing or not doing something. And kids are smart. Dear Lord, kids are so smart. They pick up on the least little thing. And it's up to us to set the example. We train them that Sundays are for God's house and worshiping Him, or we tell, the, tell them that Sunday is just another day. It's NFL Sunday. That's when Dad sits in front of the TV and he's not to be bothered at all. I remember asking, I remember my kids asking me when they were small, why do we have to say yes sir, yes ma'am, no sir, no ma'am, thank you, please? Why do we have to say that? And I said, because it shows good manners and shows respect for your elders. And I remember the next question were, what are elders? <laughs> so I had to explain that. But we train them by teaching them and letting them watch us the way we live our lives because you're setting an example, either good or bad. When we train a horse, we don't wait until he's 10 years old and think, oh my, I think I'll make a barrel racing horse out of him or I'll make a, a roping horse out of him. It's not going to happen, folks. Anybody that's tried it knows that. You train a colt when he's two years old or before. And when they're young, and that's just like children, that's the most impressionable age of young people is when they're children. They'll pay more attention to you and listen to you more when they're at a younger age. Uh, then they get to be uh, oh, teenagers and they go brain dead. Most of them. Not all of them, but some of them. Then they get their driver's license and they become the smartest young people you've ever seen. Their parents are so dumb. Then they reach 25 or 30 years of age and all of a sudden, their parents got so much smarter in spite of our faults. Uh, we still love them, and we still love them in spite of their faults, just like our Heavenly Father loves us in spite of our faults. The word agape means love, God's unconditional love. That agape love is why this church will grow and will continue to grow because of the agape love. God has blessed this church, I believe, and the pastor and the deacons, and he's going to continue to bless it because 
It is a doer of the word. James 1.22, the word says, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. This church is a doer of the word and is pleasing to God. When I was working in Corsicana, after I retired from the athletic goods, Janie and I were, we lived in a camping trailer down there for this job because wasn't sure when it was going to be over with, but just a few months. And that was an experience in itself, uh, living in close quarter with three dogs and my wife. Uh, so we went to this church, this cowboy church in Corsicana, and there was probably 400 people there Real nice looking church, had a nice roping pin. That was important. Uh, so we went to that church one Sunday. We kind of was looking around down there. I guess we stayed about six weeks down there. But anyway, uh, we went that one Sunday to that church, 400 people, one, one person welcomed us. I hope that this church, I know that this church does better than that. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. I know that we are a more friendly church than that. Uh, it doesn't take much to say hi. How are you? My name's such and such. Introduce yourself. It means a lot to the people that are coming and visiting. It, it would be wise for each one of us to take note of that because I'm the world's worst, guaranteed. Uh, but after that experience, I did change my habits. Uh, we want people to feel welcome when they come. We want them to feel that agape love James 1.22 said, be doers of the word. And this church is a doer of the word. Uh, may not mean much to you, but believe me, it means a lot to the person you're saying good morning to, welcome to this church. It means a lot to them. Uh, it's just too simple not to do. And you know, um, the Bible says, if anyone, lo if anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he's a liar. For anyone who do does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Pretty plain, pretty simple, isn't it? But how easy is it to do that? Sometimes people are difficult to love, difficult to speak to, difficult to be friendly to. But then you, if you remember Philippians 4.13, the word tells us, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So if you're saying, I can't go up to them and shake their hand and talk to them, uh, you're calling the Bible a liar. Philippians 4, 13 says you can. All you have to do is get off of your backside and go do it. And that's when the love of God is very important. When you're welcoming someone else into your group or the group, uh, make them feel welcome. The word says in Luke 6.45, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If you have hatred, strife, and bitterness in your heart, then that's what's most likely going to come out of your mouth. By the same token, if you have God's love in your heart, then that too will come out of your mouth. What's that little song? It says, 
They will know we are Christians by our love. I think that's the reason that God gave us two ears and one mouth. Listen twice as much as you talk. Matthew 12, 37 says, For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. People that we welcome and come in contact with should be able to listen to our conversations and determine if we have that love of God in our hearts. At the very least, they should be able to tell we are Christians and I know some people that that doesn't apply to. Not calling any name. Someone I know. In Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20, Jesus told us what to do. He said, All authority in heaven and earth have been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Have we done that? Jesus told us what to do. Make disciples out of them. He would be with us always to the very end of the age. Well, I could have talked to old so-and-so, but I just didn't feel like I was supposed to. Well, you didn't hear that from God. Because it says, the book says right there, he will be with us always to the very end of the age. We need to be sure and suffer not the little children so that the next generation will know about the love of God that our generation has experienced. Kids are getting so far away. Adults are getting so far away from church. How can the adult teach if, if they're not there to teach the children? Uh, parents, grandparents, and disciples. We've been given a job to do. It's up to us to see that we follow the instructions that we were given for this next generation to come. And my personal belief is time is short. Time is very short. Uh, we, Janie and I teach out to Sunday school out here, the kids, and the age that we have are so impressionable. And even kids that each one of you come in contact with, it doesn't matter. Tell them about God. Don't be closed mouth about it because you're cheating them. You're cheating those kids out of blessings that they could ask for if they knew about it. So uh, it's not just parents and grandparents. There are disciples here also. And Jesus said we should do it. Time is short. I think this pandemic thing is the beginning of the end. Uh, I don't think Christians need to run around like a chicken with their head cut off. Uh, if you know who your Savior is, then you don't need to be scared and worried. Uh, and it's our job to help those that don't know. There's a lot of people that you come in contact with that don't know Jesus. And explain to them where you're at in your walk with Jesus. Because we have to save this next generation. I really believe that. Because it's, they've taken uh, God out of the Pledge of Allegiance. They've taken prayer out of school. Uh, they're trying to push God and, and Jesus out instead of welcoming them in. I think I think we're in a perilous time. I really do. I believe that uh, if some of them had their way, they would destroy the Bible. They would destroy it. And nothing would surprise me because of what they've already done. 
did you think they'd ever take out the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance? No, I never did. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. They're wanting to wipe out everything pertaining to Jesus. And who's going to who's going to tell the people? Are you? Am I? It's our job. And oh no, no, Lou. Uh, well, read the book. Read the book. We read part of it tonight. It says you will be disciples. Oh, I don't think they're talking to me. Yes, Jesus is talking to you. You talk to him and he'll talk to you. And he'll tell you to get off your backside and go do something. I promise you. God loves us with an unbelievable love that we can't even fathom. So give him that love back and trust him with your life, with your grandchildren's life, with your children's life. There used to be a little song, uh, uh, a guy sang one night at a cowboy church meeting. It said, Jesus is alive and well. Jesus is alive and well. Tell everyone you see and tell them from me. Jesus is alive and well. And it goes on and on. It's, but it's, it's, it's true. It's true. Uh, if you don't think he is, then just in your prayer time, ask him for something. Ask him for your healing or your brother's healing or your sister's healing. Somebody's healing. And if you don't believe you might as well spit in the wind because it says in the book that you have to believe. Not maybe, not might. You have to believe. So, uh, and that's not a misprint. So, uh, the more people we tell, the better it'll be. Uh, we are blessed in this church you don't, you, you don't realize. Uh, when Janie and I were shopping around for churches, uh, we went to some that <laughs> were, uh, they were kind of out there, you know. But this church is grounded, and this church will tell you the truth. Yeah. Listen to this church. Listen to the Bible, what the Bible says. Uh, you will be blessed, I promise you. You will be blessed. And don't be selfish with your blessing. Invite others to come to church here. Tell them what we have, the gold nugget that we have here. Tell them, hey, what church do you go to? Oh, I don't go to any church anymore. I don't believe in that anymore. Well, let me tell you something. You can believe in it now. Come go to church with me and invite them to church. Uh, if you don't, you know, think about, I've already thought about this. When you stand before God, and you will, and I will, we all will. When you stand before God and he said, Lou, why didn't you ask so-and-so to go to church with you? He's not going anywhere or she's not going anywhere, why didn't you ask them to come go to church with you and let them experience this church? And you say, well, God, I was just pretty busy. Uh-huh. That's not going to cut it. And we're all going to stand before God. We're going to stand before him, and you better have the right answer. So... Start with the little ones. Start with the little ones. Uh, introduce them. Because just like a colt, you don't wait till he's 10 years old to break him. A colt is two years old, and that's when he is the most impressionable. You can train him. You can teach him more. 
uh, because he's willing to learn. He's two years old. He's not 10 years old. If he's 10 years old, you might as well forget it. So each one of us here knows some children, somebody's children, may not be a grandchild, or, but you know somebody who has children. Invite them to church. We have Sunday school uh, for all ages. So it says be a disciple. That's active. That's not passive. That's active. You have to do something to be a disciple. And what are you going to say when God says, why didn't you invite more people to my church? Better have a good one. Better have a good answer. Uh, well, I don't know. I just... That won't cut it. So start with the little ones and teach them. Uh, I helped a guy who showed field trial bird dogs. And I worked with the puppies. And the puppies were, oh, about so tall. And those little puppies were the funniest things. That little tail just going like this, you know, you kick out some pen raised birds and snap a lead rope on the collar of that little dog. And he runs out there, and that little puppy just, oh, he's shaking. He's shaking. He just can't, he wants to jump on that quail so bad. And you hold on to that lead rope and don't let him bust the cover, you know. I had more fun doing that, teaching those puppies. But now you let that dog get totally grown, forget it. He'll go in and bust the birds every time. So get with some kids, and you may have to take two steps back to train them, because they don't know, you know. But it is a blessing, if you will, if you'll train some, some kids. Uh, I love training those little bird dogs. They just are so excited. They just run out there back and forth trying to find a quail. And then when they'd lock up, it was fun to see how long they would lock up. But y'all are trained bird dogs. Y'all are all trained. You know what to do. How many people I don't want, I do not want a show of hands. How many people have led someone to the Lord? How many people? Don't raise your hands. That's going to be another question God's going to ask. Who did you lead to the Lord? Uh, nobody. Why did you not lead somebody to the Lord? Well, I was awful busy. Nah, wrong, wrong answer. So uh, we're about out of time, and I'm rambling, so be blessed this week. Bless somebody this week. Invite somebody. I, I double-dog dare you. Invite one person to, to church this week. Invite them to church. And, and bring them and introduce them to people. Uh, make them feel welcome. That's our job, folks. That's our job. And we've got to do it. You can't, you can't be slack on that. It's not up to the pastor. It's not up to him to go running up and down the streets welcoming people to this church. That's our job. The Bible says it. It's our job. So... Thank you all for coming. Go be a blessing to somebody this week and bring somebody with you to church Sunday. Amen. Amen.